Summer Strong. Yeah. Yeah. I am Pat Ivy. Great to see you all. I get the distinct pleasure to introduce someone who has given a lot to this field of strength and conditioning. This field that I owe a lot to. Coach Corliss Fingers has over 30 years in the game. Master strength and conditioning coach at the highest levels. When I first got into this profession, seeing someone like her in the game was virtually unheard of. She was a unicorn. This is a tough profession, only for the tough. Her journey is unique, but probably not as unique as it should be. She's the vice president of the Collegiate Strength and Conditioning Coaches Association. She's a wife, a mom, a fantastic person, a motivator, someone that I look up to, someone that challenges me personally, professionally, to be the best version of myself always, someone that is going to come here and challenge you today. So I want you to be ready for that, to be challenged, because her journey has been challenging, and she's going to share that. So Summer Strong is a special place for special people. My wife, she loves this place. She calls it Oprah for meatheads. So let's get better. Welcome to the stage, Corliss Fingers. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate um, that welcome. Thanks, Dr. Pat Ivey. I want to thank Bert for the very weird, slightly spam type text message that he sent me that I took a chance on responding and inviting me here. So I'm just going to give a, a little bit of my journey. Um, first of all, happy birthday. Woohoo. This. Oh, it does work. Okay, great. Hey, coach. Why is there a girl in the locker room? All righty. We'll come back to that. So today, we're going to discuss the journey of managing a career of challenges and obstacles while being a collegiate strength and conditioning coach, who just happens to be a woman. But before I get started, it's always good to know who you're talking to and where they're coming from. Number one, I am a child of God, couldn't do anything without my heavenly father. I am a wife of Dr. Ernie Fingers up there. Um, he's the CEO of the Fingers Touch, which is a performance elevation group. I'm the mother of an amazing straight A Taekwondo champion, golf enthusiast, surfer, just all around amazing son. Lenny, he's here to support us as well. I'm a master strength coach, like Dr. said, and sit on the board. I am uh, the director of strength and conditioning at Bethune-Cookman University, where I've spent the past eight seasons. Prior to here, I was at Southern University, head strength coach there, spent three and a half years there. The bulk of my career took place at the University of Maryland, 15 years. And I got my start into collegiate strength and conditioning with no other than Jeff Mad Dog Madden at the University of North Carolina. Um, I got into the profession, well, just into fitness in general, a long time ago as a personal trainer and aerobics instructor. And I'm a Tar Heel. That's where I went to school and where I ran track. So that is me summed up real quickly in one slide. That's my group. That's my family. That's my support system. They keep me strong. They are my biggest fans, my toughest critics, my 
experimentation. I bring stuff home, especially my son. He's at the age now. I'm like, try this. Get a lower. How did that feel? But I wouldn't be able to do any of this without them. So I'm very thankful for them. So in the beginning, I was teaching aerobics at Spy Health Club where I taught something called like funk aerobics. And Mad Dog had just got to Carolina and he was looking for someplace or someone to help the guys move their hips, feet, found out from one of the guys who worked over the summer about my class. Came, checked it out, hired me for five weeks. He locked me in a room twice a week with the O-line, D-line, fat linebackers, and fat running backs. At the end of that, they were leaner, they were more mobile, we had a great time, lost some weight, and they passed their condition test. So once it was all over, he said, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to do what you're doing, but women don't do that. He said, they do now, I got a position for you. That's how I got my career started. Who's missing from this picture is George Smith. I don't know where he was at, but you can see it was a predominantly black staff. That's huge for me. That's where I learned who I am. That's where I got my voice from, my coaching voice, all the support. That's all I know. And I did that for four years. When I asked him, why did he hire me? You know, this is actually recently I was preparing for something else. And I was like, Dog, what were you thinking? You know, why did you hire me of all the people? One, I was closer to their age. I was a Tar Heel. He was forward thinking during that time. But it was like she designed a program that was efficient, quick moving, with rapid results. She brought energy and ability to have direct conversation with people not too much younger than herself. Student athletes need to be able to connect with someone on your strength staff to help them with their total experience and mental health. He thought about that way back in, 1993, I think is when we got started. So he heads off to Texas. That was too far and too hot for me, so I go north. University of Maryland, Jeff, I mean, um, Dwight Galt hired me as an assistant strength coach then. I had been working there for maybe three months, four months, when he introduced me to someone else. And I was, nice to meet you, shook his hand. He's like, wow, that's a great handshake you got there. Dwight says, yeah, that's why I hired her. And I'm like, huh? You know, later that day, I said, what did you mean by that? He said, oh yeah, I hired you because you had the best handshake out of everybody. Not my skills, not my knowledge, not that I've been with Mad Dog, not that I've been in Carolina. Hmm, your handshake. It was confident. You looked me in my eye. It was nice and strong. It wasn't overpowering, trying to win some arm wrestling competition. It wasn't a weak noodle. It was perfect. It was, I am confident. This is my job. I know what I'm doing. I'm excited. I'm enthusiastic. I got all this energy. He got all that from my handshake. Same question to him. What were you thinking? Why did you hire me? During my 27 years at the University of Maryland, I was extremely blessed to work alongside Corliss Fingers in the physical preparation of our student athletes. Coach Fingers was one of four very qualified finalists for Maryland's open assistant strength and conditioning position for football in 1995. And at the completion of the interview, it was obvious to all that she was superior to her three male co-interviewees. Corliss assists with football throughout her 15 years together while also supervising and training her five other sports. When she arrived in Maryland, women working with football was typically not occurring, and her confidence, toughness, knowledge, and professionalism not only earned her tremendous respect for the entire program, but also paved the way for other females to work with male sports. While I'm so proud of Corliss for have achieved as a strength coach, I'm extremely proud of the impact she has as a trailblazing woman in a male-dominant profession. 15 years, I will lie to him. He believed in me, he pushed me, he made sure that I was gonna be better, wanted me to be a director. There were some peaks and valleys, ups and downs, good and bad, and we're gonna visit some of those. We're gonna start with the bad, valleys. Just like the title. There's a girl in the football locker room. So pregame, in there, all strength coaches doing their thing, got their guys, they're stretching out and pumping up, smacking around, stretching the leg. Here comes Coach Freegan, head, head coach, football coach, come through the door, group of recruits and fathers, and he's giving us a little spiel. Any questions? All of a sudden I hear a male voice. Why is there a girl in here? So y'all just going to let girls in the locker room on game day? All right, here we go. Coach Freegan, what you talking about? 
And it's like, Coach, why is there a girl in the locker room? Coach still don't know what he's talking about. I put the leg down. I said, Coach, he's talking about me. He looks me up and down, looks at the father. That ain't no coach. I mean, that ain't no girl. That's our strength coach. And kept on moving. He said, come on, let me show you what the sauna is. And I'm standing there. I'm like, oh, okay. Great. We've lost recruits. We have lost recruits in different sports because of me. If they find out I'm going to be working with that sport, they don't want them coming. The parents don't want them coming. The kids may not want to come. I actually had an athlete who I was not there on his visit um, said that we bamboozled him once he gets on campus and finds out that the strength coach is a female. But anyway, that's one of the valleys. Um, what's she giving you? I left Carolina when a few athletes were there in their junior year. And so one kid in particular has some learning issues, not very comfortable in the weight room, big, huge kid, but never was exposed to it. Got with him, made him real comfortable, get some strength gains, just huge. I love his junior year. So his senior year, had a great season, got an invitation to the combine. His girlfriend just happened to be at Maryland. He moved, stayed with her, and came and trained with me. So we're probably in week two, one of the football coaches come down to the weight room. He sees him in there and he's like, hey, what you doing here? He's like, hey, what's going on? Get some training in for a combine working with coach. He looks at me and he's like, that's your coach? And he's like, yeah, 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 she's getting me right. You know, getting some strength, you know, get some speed, getting ready for the combine. <laughs> what's she giving you for you to come all the way here to work with her? Two seconds, he got jacked up, put up against the wall, and he said, don't you ever disrespect my coach like that again. Me and that coach are real cool now, but that's what he thought. What's she giving you? A wrestler called our SWA on a Friday night, late night, from a payphone, and didn't give his name, and said, that strength coach called me a P-U-S-S-Y. Monday, I get a phone call from the principal. That's where I always called him. Got to go to the principal's office because I was always in the AD's office about something I did or something I said. So we're sitting there. And she said, did you say that? I'm like, nope, I did not. I said he was acting like a vagina. And I may or may not have thrown tampons at him. And she was like, correlates. If you know Debbie, La Debbie Al, correlates, you can't do that. And I'm like, why not? I have one. I know what it's like. He was acting like one. The fact that he called you on a Friday night after hours from a payphone and wouldn't give his name, my point exactly. So she's trying her best not to laugh, and she's like, you know what? We're just going to add hormonal. I was eight months pregnant at the time, so she said, we're just going to write down hormonal and add it to the rest of the pile. I'm like, okay, great. Conditioning test. Y'all remember when we used to have to pass condition tests before you can participate in camp, football camp? Okay, so I had one old lineman that struggled with the conditioning test all the time, and it's the very last day. Camp is tomorrow. If you didn't pass the condition test, you had to take it every time until you pass it. So that means you will not be able to practice that first practice. You can practice the second practice, but you're going to be tired. Last day. Dwight's taking the even numbers. We had hundreds. I'm taking the odd numbers. So I'm down at the other end. Well, I'm sorry. I'm taking the even numbers. He didn't take it out. So whatever it was. No. One, two. Yes. So number nine, whenever I'm doing a condition test, I yell out the numbers, and then I say time to let you know. So you have to make it in 18 seconds. 15, 16, 17, time, he dips. I don't say anything. He goes ahead, runs number 10, all right? His position coaches meet me halfway. He goes, he didn't make that, did he? I was like, no, he didn't. He said, okay, I didn't think so. All of a sudden, I see him down there, huffing and puffing, kicking stuff, and so on. We move on. Every morning, he's having to run this condition test. On day number three, he is really just like done. Most coaches kind of sleep in the building at night, not me. I'm going home. I'm tired. I'm going home. I'm going out the building, it's dark, it's late, and who's leaning up against my car but said player? He said, you caused me to miss my condition test. No, 
you caused you to miss your conditioning test. And I'm going to need for you to get off my car. Inside, I am shaking like a leaf. Ain't nobody else around. Everybody's in the building. Old lineman, at least 315, 65 maybe, and little old bitty me. I guess I showed him I wasn't scared. He got off my door. He slid back and he said, you need to watch your back. I'm coming for you. Get off my car. I cried all the way home. And I'm saying I can't do this. Because I guarantee you, he did not threaten Dwight the way he threatened me. Because he also missed number eight. So he didn't just miss the one on my end. He made 10 because he sprinted and threw his body across the line. But I got threatened. Our SWA has said I'm too aggressive. She's just too aggressive. Dumbbell, overhead, shoulder press was written on a workout for a softball team. I'm in the middle of doing something. The girl comes up to me. Hey, coach, what is this? Which one? This. What does it say? DB, overhead, shoulder press. I'm like, okay. She said, what is it? What is it? I don't know. One more time. What is it? She's like, what is it? I'm like, I, okay, I don't understand the question. One more time. She goes, you know, dumbbell overhead shoulder press. I was like, exactly. You got it. All you had to do was just say that. I did. I actually typed it out. Off to the principal's office, I go again. I'm aggressive. That was the meaning to her. That's what I, because remember, let me back up. For 15 years, I was the only female on staff, and I was the only black person on staff. So I got to treat it a certain way, or certain things were expected of me. I was aggressive because I said, dumbbell over his shoulder press. I didn't explain it to her. And then there's the baseball coach. We got a new, base, new baseball coach. I had been working with them. We had to have supervised meetings. The very first day he came on campus, he said, I do not want her working with my team because she did not play in the MLB. How many male strength coaches work with women's basketball, work with softball, work with tennis? You didn't play those sports, but it's okay. But because I did not play in the MLB, I can't work with baseball. We went through a lot. I had to give him my programs before I had the team do them so that he can look them over and approve them like he knew what he was looking at. That's what I had to do. Nobody else on staff had to do that, just me. We went at it constantly. But then there was some good stuff. I worked with 23 out of the 27 sports at the University of Maryland during my 15 years there. There's a lot of ACC championships, because that's where we were at the time, and there was a lot of NCAA championships. Great times. Friendships with athletes and with support staff, I'll never be able to take away. Like, that's when my child was born. He learned how to crawl literally on the platform in the weight room during a lift. Um, and everybody cheered him on. Walking, basketball court, like, I'll never t take the experience that I had there for granted. Not a girl, but our strength coach. Our head football coach said that, and that's how he viewed me. That's huge to have the football coach say, that's no girl, that's our strength coach. That's awesome. That's how he, I mean, later on, he'll play a big part in my career. And then there's Kerry McCoy. If you know, if you're a wrestler or a wrestler in high school or college, you might know the name Kerry McCoy. When the wrestling coach retired, they're bringing in this new coach. Anytime you have a coaching change, it's difficult for whatever strength coach working with that sport. Anytime you have a coaching change and you're a female, a black female, working with a male sport, it's even more tougher. So with this baseball coach, I had to have all my programs. I had to call people. Like, I'm getting all this together for this new wrestling coach. Because I heard about him. Like, he was badass. Like, college and Olympics. Coaching, everything. First day, he said, I don't want that. That's your lane. Whatever you want to do, just tell me where you want them, what time, and how many days. I can't settle with that, and I'm thinking it's a setup. No, no, no. Okay. All right, here it is. Coach, you got this. Like, I trust you. That was huge to have somebody that legendary say, no, no, that's your lane. I got it. 
on the first day and was like that all the time. Come in. Coach, I heard yesterday's workout was awesome. Great job. Hey, I heard so so it didn't come in. I heard you got him good with a punishment. I did. Great job. Like, always supporting me. Everybody needs to take care of McCoy. And then that baseball coach. So we flipped it, and the day that we flipped it was a really tough, intense day. They had been on a losing streak, and he was not happy, and it was that Sunday, and after the game, he was like, I want him in the weight room lifting them tomorrow. I'm like, well, Monday's that day off. We're lifting Tuesday and Thursday. I got the pitchers Wednesday night. Coach, I don't know. Let's, let's just give him the day off. I want him lifting tomorrow. So we're going back and forth. I'm like, it's my professional opinion that they don't need to lift tomorrow. They're tired. That's what's going on. They need to, I want them in the weight room, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Okay. I go home and I gather every game I can find. On Monday, when they came in the weight room, I had backgammon, checkers, old maids, goldfish, twister, the whole weight room set up. Guys come in, they're like, what's going on? It's like, all right, outfield, you guys on twisters first. Infield, I need you, okay, pitchers and cat. The whole, and they were like, what's going on? Let's go. Six minute rounds. And then we're switching. Like, okay, they got into it. It was so much fun. Cranking the music up. About 20 minutes into it, here comes the head baseball coach. He comes in and he's like, what is going on? I'm like, yo, coach, what you got? You want old maids or you want twister? What you want next? And he is turning red. He's 6'6. Six, six. Face looks like it's about to explode. Everybody out. He kicks everybody out of the weight room. The guys are like snickering and trying their best. Like, they leave and he waits. He lays into me. We're now going back and forth. I said, I told you I didn't want them lifted. You said in the weight room. That's where we were. We were in the weight room. So he storms out. Not even 30 seconds later, he comes back in and he goes, And another thing, the day you stop arguing with me is the day I want another strength coach. I'm like, Fine. Huh? So he leaves. It takes him a good almost two days to calm down. He calls me up. He said, can we meet? I say, yes. We sit and we meet. And he was like, first of all, you're a piece of work. Been told that before. Second of all, you're an asshole. Been told that too. He goes, but what I like is you stick with your gut. You have my player's best interests at heart. And you stand on your principle and your word. I need that. My coaching staff tells me what I want to hear, not what I need to hear. That day forward, no more getting him to approve my programs. He stayed out of my way. They were very successful. To the point that I actually, we'll talk about my health later, but I had gotten sick and was out for a while. And it was a, a office in the weight room. And I remember one day, I'm still at home recovering, and he calls me. And you can see the number, and I'm like, hello? He's like, when are you coming back? He was like whispering, and I'm like, Coach, what, what's going on? He said, the guys were here lifting with these dudes, Dwight Galt, the director, and one other person is filling in for me, and he was mad about it. A whole 360. He's like, you need to hurry up and come back. They're messing up my team, which was a valley. It's now a peak. One of the relationships with one of the players, um, again, 16, 17, no, he was 18 years old, um, helped develop, really worked with them. Again, same question. Why is it that I could get you to do stuff where, like, you never saw female? You know, you never questioned and never got backlit. And here's what he said. But this was after he had already retired, been in the league for a while. She pushed me more than any other coach I've had during my entire career. Entire career. Her expectations for me are so high. I could see the difference when I followed her lead. It didn't bother me that she was a woman training football players, but she was very knowledgeable and learned her respect just like any other coach. She wanted what was best for us, and we could feel it. That's from Tori Smith. We moving along. Husband got this PhD he hadn't used yet. LSU called and said, come on, let's go. Baton Rouge, we head. I started sending out resumes to all the different schools in the area. In case anybody wanted to take the CSCCA, I could mentor it, maybe consult. You know, I really was going to be a housewife, but that lasted like two weeks. I'm just like, okay. After I sent the resume, 45 minutes later, I got a phone call, and it was from the AD at Southern University. Hi, and I speak with Corliss Fingers. This is she. 
dead silence. But you are female. Last time I checked, yes, dead silence. But your resume, I'm like, well, what about it? It's very impressive for a female. What I did know, it was going to get real ugly before it got better. So now I have been named the new head strength coach at Southern University. And before I even got a chance to step on campus, there was petitions being signed and passed around. It was ugly. And I was like, I don't know if I should be doing this. I mean, signed by everybody. Janitors, like groundskeepers, like everybody is signing this, position, this petition. There was a few radio and podcasts going around, and one guy in particular said, Southern will never win another football game because women can't lift more than 65 pounds. And if they can't lift more than 65 pounds, how are they going to help a football player? How are they going to spot them? Another one had the nerve to actually say on radio, women are only good in football for after the game. That's before I even stepped on campus. And then I finally get, you know, job, paperwork, petition didn't work, obviously. And my AD sent me over to facilities to get my keys. He said, you should get a master key. There's 16 doors you need access to. Okay, great. Lady comes, she sees the worker order, she looks at me. She starts putting these keys down on the counter. And I'm like, what is she doing? Okay, don't ask questions yet. And then she goes, I don't have this one right here, which was the key to get into the weight room. And I'm like, uh, I'm supposed to get a master key, just one key? I don't know who you think you are, but down here, you need to stay in your lane. You don't need a master key. Women don't have these roles. Well, I don't know what your mama told you, but my mama told me to reach for the sky, so I'm going to need that key, but I'm going to come back with somebody who can get it, which I had to do, but for my own people holding me back. Guys will come in just to ask me for extra workout. Coach, can you give me some stuff for my, my grip? Can you give me some stuff for my net? I need to work on my calves a little bit. Sure, not a problem. One person came and told me, they said, Coach, stop doing that. I'm like, wow, what's going on? There was a personal trainer that was kind of filling in a gap for like three months when they didn't have a strength coach. And they did not consider him for the job. And he was highly upset about it. So he was sending guys in just to test my knowledge, to go back to report to him so that he can go and tell the, the haters she don't know what she's doing. They're testing me for no reason other than the fact that I don't have a penis. There was a high school strength coach whose head football coach got a job at the, co the collegiate level in Louisiana. And he was going with them. But you know, you got to be certified in working in college athletics. So he had reached out to me and said, hey, I want to take the CSCCA. Can you be my mentor? I was like, sure, drive on down. Let's get your paperwork signed and just kind of start the process. We got X amount of hours we got to get in. You know, I'll go ahead on to test your knowledge and some of the weightlifting exercises and we'll go from there. Sure, sign, shows up. And I'm like, okay, all right. There's a whole bunch of exercises we got to go over. Make sure you be able to, you know, talk about everything. Well, meanwhile, he's looking around the room. He's like, uh, what exercises you do for football? Like, oh, you know, I'm all into, I'm thinking he's asking, you know, what type of training? You know, I'm like, well, I'm all into explosive power. I love squats, squat anything. That's not what he was asking. He wanted to know what I did so he can tell me what to do. So meanwhile, throughout the conversation, I'm, my spidey senses are, you know, going off. I'm like, yeah, maybe not. Have you tried so-and-so? You need to do this exercise. How do you teach it? Let me see how you teach it. Because I can give you some pointers on how I do it. I'm like, no, okay, I'm being polite. No, that's okay, I got it. You know what? I'm just going to rearrange my schedule and come here like twice a week to help you with football because you probably need it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Needless to say, that was the last day I saw him. I don't know if he got a CSCCA or not, but it wasn't through me. But that's what I had to deal with. I'm older than him. I've been in collegiate athletics for, at that time, maybe 19 years. But he felt, because I have a vagina and I'm working with football, I needed his help. I'm now a year into it. There's still more petitions going around now. There's a new one from a new group. I'm all about discipline. I have kicked out everybody who has excessive misses, excessive tardies, come to my weight room smelling like weed, disrespectful for me or any coach. You got to go. So that group wanted to start their own little petition. We are still dealing with the haters. 
And then there was a lawsuit. A baseball player who felt he should have been drafted higher as a junior did not get drafted. So that summer, he decided to sue the university and me. And the reason was for not prescribing suing the university for hiring me instead of someone that knows how to design programs for everyone. And then me for not knowing much about baseball. And then also he hurts his knee. Okay, I keep great records. My backup plan has to have a backup plan. I cannot afford to not be prepared for everything. I keep great records. The week before said day he hurt his knee, squats. He did more reps, more weight than I asked. I had a little note. Stay within this training period. We don't want to go higher right now. Stay here. The week he was supposed to have hurt his knee, which he didn't because he ended up practicing or whatever. Um, same thing, did more. I made sure I kept that. Constantly having conversations. And he would say things like, I don't mean no harm, but I just, you know, I, I don't, I'd rather work with somebody else. Five years of my life went into fighting this. His lawyers took my program to a few MLB strength coaches. And every last one of them was like, not only is this a great workout for baseball, it's amazing. And anybody who's doing it should be phenomenal. I finally take the stand. I give my little whatever. They want to throw it out by saying she's an expert in the field. Therefore, everything should be thrown out. How you throw out my, you soon with me. Needless to say, zero dollars, one at all. I have to hold my ground, and I did. The whole lawsuit was because I am a female, and he felt the university should have hired somebody that knew how to play baseball. And then last, there's still threats. The last one came two years ago. I've been at Cookman for eight years. This was a walk-on who was dismissed off the team. Again, every rule I had in the weight room, he broke it. Head coach was like, okay, I'm done with you. I ignored the first few, but I got one on Facebook and I told my husband, I said, read this. And he was like, I know where you live. You think because you're in Florida means anything. I'm coming after you and that ugly child of yours. And when I told my husband, he was like, oh yeah, I got some too. Like, wait, what? He said, yes, since you want to marry that bitch, I'm coming after you. Death threats, because you got kicked out of the weight room. I bet you, you guys don't have to deal with that. Y'all kick somebody out, you're okay. Coach just don't like me. You're not going to get a threat. There's some great peeps. The head football coach, when I first got there, was Stump Mitchell. He is now the running back coach for the Cleveland Browns. Amazing guy. What I did not know was his head coach, his mentor, the person he goes to advice, was Ralph Friedgen, who was the coach that said, she's not a girl, she's our strength coach. So I'm on my interview, and I'm sitting outside of his office for hours. He was on, well, not hours, a long time. It felt like hours. But he's on the phone with Coach Friedgen. Finally, I come in his office. We sit. We talk about the weather and what is, you know, he's in Maryland. Um, he was in the Maryland area at one point. So we talk about the DMV, just, you know, whatever. Finally, I'm like, okay, let's get to the nitty-gritty. Do you have any questions for me? He's like, yeah. When can you start? I'm expecting, okay, well, how do you approach this? Well, what is your training like? What do you believe in? When can you start? That's all he said. And I'm like, okay, as uh, soon as possible. Huge supporter, believed in me from the very beginning. Never saw female. He saw a damn good strength coach, and he would say that. So much so, Coach Stump Mitchell has been up for a few NFL head coaching jobs. They put together their little portfolio on who they would have as their OC, as their DC, or whatever coaches. Listed under strength and conditioning is Corliss Fingers. And I keep saying, coach, if you take my name off of your portfolio, you might actually get a head coaching job. And he says, if that's what I got to do, then I don't need it. He's huge. It's one of the best things that, one of the best people in my life right now. Keep motivating me and pushing me. And championships. Southern University had all but one, maybe one sport that was in the bottom of the barrel at that time. By the time I left, every sport had either won or played in a championship game, including football. So that same 
person that said that they would never win because females can only 65, lift 65 pounds. And the same radio host that said women are only good for after the game reached out and wanted an interview after. They could kick rocks. They obviously didn't get one. But every sport had moved to track and field, went from dead last to second in the conference with Devin having the fastest hundred time in college that entire year. Family relationships, I, the people that I have in my life now came from there. My best friends came from my time in Louisiana. I treated that place like family because I took my son with me every day. It was amazing. I mean, I never regret that time. It was tough, but it was a great time. But he's a boy. So after a game, my child's on the sideline, grabbed his hand and said, come on, let's go across and meet, you know, these other coaches. It's like, okay, you go across. And I was like, hey, so this is, you know, so-and-so. He's a head strength coach for their team. And he kind of got like a little smirk. And he's like, I'm like, what is it? What's going on? He goes, but he's a boy. And I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? He can't be the head football strength coach. He's a boy. I'm like, we let them do it sometimes. A few of them are. It's okay. But my time there in his nurturing mind, he's at a different level. He got to see mommy. He finally started understanding what mommy does. And for him, that was huge. To have a female, that, that's what we do. He didn't think that maybe boys could do this too. No, no, no. Women are head strength coaches for football. <laughs> that's that family time. He ran with them. They treated him like, I always say, you got 95 other brothers. Go ask one of them for it. Mommy, I need help. Go ask one of the boys. Like, that time there was huge. And yes, I'm in the middle of football practice and I see the equipment manager driving across the gator about to pick up all the equipment and I have to look closely and my four-year-old son is driving a gator. That experience, it was huge there. One of the athletes said there, I had just talked to him on Monday, but he thought the university had set them, up, set them all up. They had gone through three strength coaches in like three years. They didn't care about them. They were trying to shut athletics down. That's why they hired me. They're just trying to set in the point. Wanted to run it into the ground. But they became extremely successful. And he said, Coach Fingers pushed me and my teammates to limits we thought we could never reach. And for that, I'm truly grateful. And it wasn't just the guys. It was everybody. I poured into every last one of them. When I got ready to leave to go to Florida, one of the soccer girls um, wrote me this little goodbye, little note or whatever. A little white girl from Australia had compliance issues every day that she was there. Never got a chance to play. So I saw how I was beating her up and I bought into the weight room and made her like a intern. Spent a lot of time with her, pulled out this goofy side of her. But she said, you've taught me that as a woman being in a male-oriented profession and often seen as incapable of doing certain jobs that it is very possible to achieve anything I set out to do. You've given me so much self-confidence and belief that I will succeed in life. Honest to goodness, I will be lost without you. All jokes aside, watching you work and balance your home life, being a mother and a wife and a boss has inspired, has impressed and inspired me beyond measure. I'm forever grateful for the life lessons you've gifted me. We're now at Florida. My husband is the assistant athletic director um, of the Student Athletic Services, or um, OSAS, academics. And it's the end of the first week of training with football. I'm excited. It's Friday. I'm going to go in, see what he's doing real quick, see if he want to grab lunch before I head out. And there's this specimen in there making copies, huge guy. And I've never seen him before. And I'm like, hey, what's your name? What sport you play? He said, play football. And I'm like, I ain't never seen him. Okay, well, all right, well, I don't know if you got any group me's or my emails, but we started training. Um, we had 6 o'clock in the morning. Some days we lift first, some days we're running. He's shaking his head. Nah. I didn't, what you mean? He said, nah, I'm not coming. I don't mean no harm, but I just don't see how no females going to get me ready for a football season. I need to be ready, so I'm not coming. I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm tired. I ain't got time to fight with this kid. So I just like, Google me, bitch. And I start walking away. <laughs> And as I walk away, I was like, two S's on the first name, one S on the last name. Guess who was in training Monday morning? DB, 
about to lift 425 pounds on squat. He getting ready, getting his belt right. All right, fingers, let's ride. I was like, all right. I get in the rack with him. He says I, what he calls whispering sweet nothings in his ear. I'm like, all right, we got this. You a dog. We got three. We're going to breathe through the first two. We're going to drive it out like I'm getting them ready. There's a JUCO transfer there that hadn't been there long, and he sees us across the room. And he, Elliot takes the bar off. He's getting set. He's got real smooth, decent, us in. All of a sudden, this JUCO kid comes into the rack, puts his arm in between us and pushes me out of the way, throws Elliot out. He stumbles, puts the rack. He goes, yo, man, what are you doing? He says, I'm trying to help you. I said, what you mean trying to help me? I had help. I'm trying to spot you. I had a spot. She ain't going to be able to lift that weight off of you. She ain't going to be able to spot you. And before I could even say anything, a hand went up, and he proceeded to cuss him out. He said, she not only can lift the weight, but me and the bar put us back in the rack safely. She's done it numerous times. If you ever touch me again, that's your ass. Don't ever come between me and my coach. He didn't know me. He didn't care. All he saw was female, 425 pounds, and me behind him. There are more guys now than I've ever had that insist on calling me Miss Fingers versus Coach Fingers. There's a few coaches. I correct them. Coach Fingers, yeah, 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 that's what I meant to say. That's what I have to deal with. This past season, we had one kid, welcome kid, knew he didn't play much. He had a few special teams, but he wanted to be a coach. He wanted to be a high school coach. So he asked our head coach, hey, can I just get some experience as a coach, like maybe GA type? He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, we'll do that. Some of the guys on the team will call him coach and call me miss. He in class with you. He's an undergrad. He rides the bus with you to practice, but he gets coach in front of his name, and I get miss fingers. I went through three football coaches in three months. Y'all have no idea how hard that is. It's already pressure whenever there's a coaching change. But again, being me, it was so bad that I gave up. I didn't want to work with football anymore. That fight is just too much. It's too hard. And I gave up. I don't want to work with football anymore. This year has been rough. But because of that, of what I have to do, not just proving my sets and reps, but who I am and selling my soul and trying to get you to life, I don't feel like doing it anymore. So one of the valleys is I walked away. And one of the main reasons, that bottom one, we want a male. So I don't know if you kept up with the news with the whole Ed Reed thing, um, and it didn't work out. Our AD, some alumni, our president sat down with a bunch of our players. It's like, okay, we're going to try to help you guys out, meet you at your demands. And they had some this, and we want this, and we want that. And then one in particular said, and we want a male, a male strength coach. Okay, well, why? That's all I've ever had. A couple of transfers, you know. That's all I've ever had. That's who belongs in the weight room. That's what we used to. That's what history says. We want a male. A couple of us like, yeah. Strength coaches, successful programs, have male strength coaches. Successful football programs have male strength coaches, and that's what we need. So we want a male. But there are some peaks. I've been doing it long enough that by the time I got to, Bethune came after me, me and my husband. We were on our business. I'm at Southern. He's at LSU. They came after us. So that's a good thing. So they already knew who I was. I didn't have to fight for my name. I didn't have to fight to prove what I was able to do. No petitions. A few people knew my name, so I was good. And I think one of the best things that have happened since I've been at I mean, I know I make a difference. I see I make a difference. Not just in the males, not just in football, but in everyone. I'm actually seeing I am making a difference. And then my son is older. He's beginning to understand it even more. And I could bring him along for the ride. He's here today. You know, he got a chance to go to the CSCCA um, National Conference last week. He's enjoying it. That's another perk. This young lady shared with me prior to graduation that I was the first female coach she had ever had into her, in her career, ever. College. Never had a female. From Barbados. 
And so she was just telling me how important it was just having me in her life at this time. She was really quiet, really shy, but seeing me work just kind of brought out a little something in her. It's one thing to be a black woman trying to own your own space, but to be a black woman trying to own your space while seeing another black woman doing it is another thing entirely. The world hasn't always encouraged us to be unapologetically ourselves. So to see a strong woman who looks like me in a position of authority has made me feel comfortable to reach the same goals without feeling the need to dilute who I am. I didn't feel comfortable with locking my hair until I got to an HBCU. So I understand that. I understand what I bought to her and the other women that look like her. Males and professional are referred to as coach on site. On site. As a woman, I have had to spend more days proving that I am a coach and a damn good one. 29 years plus. I'm always on the defense. I never let my guard down, ever. I can't afford to. I'm going to be the last one hired and the first one fired. I'm going to be a unicorn. I'm going to look like who I am in every place I go. I'm going to stand out. I'm always on the defense. 80% of my time is spent making others feel comfortable around me. You guys get to coach and just coach, coach. I have to make whoever I'm coaching feel comfortable around me. I can't be emotional. I can't be too girly. I can't say girly stuff. I can't be too black. 80% of my time is making others feel comfortable around me. Remember, 15 years by myself. I was so lonely in Maryland. No other female, no other black. Constantly waiting on that other shoe to drop. If y'all ever see on social media, I'm not on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm retweeting something or I'm talking about my husband or my child. Because if I get into some of the angry strength coaches debates or conversations or dumb stuff to take place, I know everybody's coming straight for me. I'm waiting on that shoe to drop, so I don't engage. I've ignored my health more than once. Our, head, our previous head football coach had to call the ambulance during practice for me because I'm still trying to push through practice. I've ignored a lot of it because I don't want the perception of me being weak. I fly under the radar. Y'all know those strength coaches that are, you know, uh, or I don't know, I'm not kidding. I don't give a damn. Um, the ones that are actually like theatrical and do stuff and for the show, they're not black. Y'all know that, right? Because we can't afford to do that, and they damn sure not women. I fly under the radar. I'm in the backdrop. I don't want the head. That was me. I did that. I fly under the radar. I don't want the attention. I hate speaking. I hate presenting. I hate it more than anything else, but I'm sitting here talking to all of y'all, and the main reason why, when I first got into the profession and I went to clinics and I went to conference and went to NSCAs, no one looked like me. So I'm trying to mold whatever it is that they're saying and talking about to fit my personality and the struggles that I have to take it to my student athletes. So I present and I talk. Every time somebody asks me, hey, can you come? I was at Rhode Island, NSCA. I didn't even partake in anything NSCA. But they asked me to come and speak, yes. Because if I don't, who will? That's going to look like me. Don't like interviews. All the awards that I've received, the whole vice president thing, my boss or my family finds out about it by somebody else or something on social media. Why you didn't tell us that you did? I was named assistant athletic director over student wellness a couple of weeks ago. A lot of people don't know that. Y'all know now. But I don't bring that attention to me. That was one of my hype songs. Everything up here, I have to give my, I listen to it. This helps me through. Throughout my career, everything from shake it off, sometimes I gotta shake it off, so what, respect, I will survive, you thought I would lay down and die, no, not I, and roar. First time I heard Roar by Katy Perry, I actually cried. Because I am a champion and you're gonna hear me roar. I need all the women to either stand up or raise your hand. Let's go. So. I don't know where you are or what you're doing and in what capacity, 
but I want to say thank you and let you know you're not alone. I know it's a struggle. I don't care where you're at. I know it's a struggle. I need all the women that work with football to stand up. Stand up. Okay, stand it. <laughs> now, if you're a female and you work with, y'all stay standing, and you work with baseball, men's soccer, hockey, a predominantly male sport, stand up. Thank you. So, keep fighting, keep pushing. If don't nobody tell you you're worth it, I'm telling you you are. If you need help, call me. I know it's hard. If you need help, call me. Ain't nothing nobody said to you ain't been said to me. Ain't no stereotype you've been labeled with ain't been labeled on me first. I do what I do so that y'all can stand up. I've dealt with the shit that I've dealt with. This shit is hard. I know it is. I make this shit look easy. But it's hard. I got your back. You reach out, okay? Okay. I need all the guys. <laughs> so what did we walk away with? There's some nice people and there are good people. Good people do the right thing. Do the right thing. I need you to be aware of your culture. Normalize quality and inclusion. What does that mean? Look for quality. Don't look for just a male. Don't look for just a white male. Look for quality. That means you're going to take if you got a position open, you're going to take Sharon's resume just as serious as you take Stevens. And you're going to take Shaquanda's resume just as serious as you take Sharon and Stevens. Normalize quality. Are you the solution or the problem? You need to see us, all of us. See us. We shouldn't have to say Google me. Correct the BS. I had a strength coach reach out to me and say, I got a female intern I need you to talk to. I'm like, okay, great, give her my number. She contacts me, Corliss. My name is Jazz. I just wanted to introduce myself. Coach so-and-so told me to reach out to you. Can we set up a time to dialogue? I didn't address her. I addressed him. So why does the girl addressing me like we friends? I've been a strength coach longer than you've been alive. Why is she talking to me like this? She needs to put some respect on my damn name. He said, you're right. I got it. But that shouldn't happen. Support, mentor, and advocate. Every name on my resume, for reference, are all males. I would not be where I'm at now if it hadn't been for a male. I'm not going to get any farther if it's not going to be from a male's help. So it's y'all's duty to help us, to help more. That four or five people stood up. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Especially since a large part of your athletes, especially with football, are black. So why not have somebody they can relate to? I know where I'm at now. A lot of our athletes were raised by a single black woman. It is what it is. So they relate to me quicker. Y'all got to do a better job. Be flexible, too. If there's a mom on your staff, let her go home to her kid. Let her go watch her kid's recital. Be flexible. Every morning I pull to the edge of my driveway and I say, Lord, help me make a difference in somebody's life today. That's my prayer every single morning. Help me make a difference. And that's what I try to do, is make a difference in somebody's life. And I just challenge y'all to do the same. That is my time. That is my info. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm sorry it took so long. Thank you.